one shot anyway. So. All right. <laughs> All right, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here with Marcus Rogers. Some of y'all know him, you know, most of y'all know him. And, you know, I always share his videos, so y'all probably know him from my page or whatever. But I had an opportunity uh, to, you know, talk to him, ask him a few questions about his life, and just chop it up. So it's going to be a real one take. So we're just going to walk and talk. All right. All right, one take. So one, one take. Shot. Yeah, <laughs> one shot, one take. Yes, so you're from Chicago. Yes, sir. What part of Chicago you grew up in? Uh, pretty much the north side. When I first got here, uh, my mother was, went, we went straight from the airport to the shelter. Uh, okay. So we was there for a couple of months, and then she saved her little money, got a job, and we moved right by Wrigley Field. That okay, area. I'll say yeah, right by the Cubs, so that's north side, north yeah, side. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, okay. So what, growing up, like I, I heard your testimony and stuff, you said, you know, your father wasn't around mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's how many of you guys? Four. Four of y'all, right? Mm -hmm. So what was it in your childhood experiences that made you want to go to the Army? Like, what made you, like... Uh, Pick the army. Yeah, pretty much. Well, my dad was in the army, so I saw a little bit of that when I before you know him and my mom went their separate ways. Uh -huh. But then mostly seeing how hard my mom worked. Uh -huh. I mean, she was out here like pushing us, you know, pushing my little brother in the stroller in the snow, snow like all the way Whoa. up to here, and you know, uh, waiting on the bus and uh -huh. just working hard. So she she worked at a daycare, and then she went to school, you know, and just all that by herself. She wasn't getting no help uh -huh. as far as finances from my pops. Gotcha. So I felt like as soon as I could get out the house, uh -huh. that would be you know better for her because less one less person that she have to worry about. But you're not the oldest, are you? Are I'm you, the you are the oldest. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they say sometimes they say the, the oldest always go either to the police or to the military. <laughs> They're the more disciplined one and stuff. So okay, I know you were yeah. the oldest. Yeah. Okay, so you went to the army. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, in the army boot camp, you got to swim a lot, or that's not a lot of swimming. So um, it's in the navy, so. No, nah, I mean, they do have drown proofing that you uh -huh. got to do like maybe once every six months. Okay. And they just pretty much teach you like how to use your uniform not to drown. Uh huh. That's it. So did you, uh, boot camp was easy for you? Yeah, I, I love boot camp. You I, would, boot camp. I would go back right now. I probably wouldn't be the same. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'd, be, I'd probably be hurting, but uh -huh. I loved it. It was, man, it was an experience. Okay, and then from boot camp, you got stationed. Your first duty station, where you get stationed at? Uh, Fort, well, I went reserves for about six months, and then uh -huh. I was like, nah, I'm going to go active. So then I went to Fort Eustis, Virginia, uh -huh. and I was there for most of the time. Um, they sent me to Iraq and Afghanistan out of Fort Eustis. Then I went to South Korea. And then when I came back from South Korea, they put me in uh, Port Kentucky. Okay. Hey, then we're gonna make this right turn real quick. All right, so that's one thing I wanna, uh, I forgot, not forgot, like I said, I was gonna ask you that right away. So what do you think? Is Kim Jong-un dead or alive? What's your there was a that? prophecy that said that he was gonna be like uh, in a vegetable state. And uh -huh. what's so crazy about that, that prophecy I think was back in like, I don't know, it, it was years ago. And it's so it seems so accurate. Fox News reported that um, they believed that he was in some kind of vegetative state. So I believe, according to the prophecy, you know, he's probably gonna die. Oh, okay. So you think they're just fluffing up, they're trying to, North Korea is just trying to conceal it right, right. now and not trying to get that out there. Yeah. Okay, so you said you went to uh, Korea. But okay, so you're a combat veteran. So you mm -hmm. in Afghanistan and uh, Iraq during the uh, Operation Doing Freedom, mm -hmm. Iraqi Freedom, okay. Right. So you, you got to see combat. Mm -hmm. And let's see, what's the questions about combat? I mean, pretty much the questions are like, why you were there, because you weren't saved at the time. Yeah, I, well, I mean, well, you like, grew up in church. I, I grew up in church, but I, I didn't have like a relationship with uh -huh. God at that point. I was kind of just, just floating. So did that that being in that situation, that environment, make you like bring your Bible with you? Because you know they have a lot of programs where they got the little, the camouflage Bibles they mm -hmm. get to the soldiers and all that stuff. Did that make you try to get closer, or you were just like no, living? I, I always, I always was conscious, even in um, Iraq and Afghanistan, uh -huh. and then of course because of the stuff that was happening over there, you know, it kind of made you just you kind of where you could lose your life at any uh -huh. point in time so you know you always kind of want to be you know right got gotcha. you know? so what are you doing like the sinner's prayer every night like lord god i know <laughs> i did some wrong today give me up my sins watch me cleanse your blood like every it, every night honest to be 100 percent honest with you i remember one night uh, in afghanistan they broke into the camp mm -hmm. and you know the sirens went off and they were like you know they, they invaded they invaded uh -huh. i remember i grabbed my uh i had a saw uh -huh. my 249 and i lock and loaded it uh -huh. and i was like lord I know, you know, I ain't been doing everything right. Uh, yeah. But I said, if you just cover me, uh -huh. you know, and I remember I went out and um, you know, I prayed that prayer before I went out there. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so let's fast forward. I know a little bit of your testimony. You said you were on a on a bridge about to jump. And this was this was what door this what age was 12, this? 12 years oh, this is before you went to the army. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. What was it that the all the build up or just not having a father? What was it all that played into that? Well, uh, it's hard for any woman to have to be the mom and the dad the yeah. provider and then come home and cook so my mom wasn't really um 
you know, very lovey-dovey and affectionate. Uh -huh. But then plus, you know, she had been abused and been through a lot. So a lot of times you can't give what you've never received. Uh -huh. So I grew up, you know, and I just didn't think, you know, that I was loved and stuff. It wasn't that she was a bad mom or none of that. It's just uh -huh. she had to work so hard. She was so tired. Uh -huh. So I kind of just felt like a burden most of the time. Uh -huh. And then my self-esteem was really low. Uh -huh. And then that that's just, you know, enemy was just talking to me like, man, you might as well just go ahead and, you know, do that. So what was the, cause you guys are biracial. Mm -hmm. Did that, growing up on the North side, did, was that an issue, like identity issue? Like, or was it, does it that didn't come into play at all? Cause y'all so many of y'all, y'all got each other. But. Well, I, to be honest, I think that, um growing when we went to the uh, african-american church uh -huh. that was a big wake-up call uh -huh. because we wasn't so received like that in the beginning uh -huh. and then even in my school like even though it was predominantly black i was fighting all the time because they saw my mom and they saw that she was white uh -huh. so it was always like oh you got a white mom da, yeah. da, da, da. but for the most part up north it's pretty mixed yeah it's like middle class kind of mixed uh -huh. and so you know it, it wasn't that bad oh, okay okay so you go to the you that happened you know, of course you make it through, you make it to the army. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you start, like, what year did you start doing social media in the army? When I was in South Korea, about 2015. You had already been in, because what year did you go in? 2005. Okay, I went in 2002. All right, we're going to make it right, I guess, right? <laughs> hey, let's keep on going right. <laughs> no problem, no problem. All right, I'll say 2000, you said 2012? Uh, 2014. That's uh, when you started doing social media. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, explain. I mean, not explain, but tell how that. Like when you first started, what was your? Because you got saved, of course. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, tell me how you got saved. That's, that's the whole thing. Well, I, I got when I was seven years old. You know, that's when I got saved. Uh -huh. But then by the time I was 18, 19, I was kind of like, oh, go, you know, go to the club, do this, do this. Uh -huh. And so I was kind of just going through the religious motions. Yeah. And I didn't really have uh, the understanding of a relationship with God. Uh -huh. and so I'll say about. 26 27 is when i really started getting like a real genuine relationship with god uh -huh. and that's where you know i started doing the, the videos because I, I was just going through all kinds of stuff that uh -huh. most people don't even know about and i used i used to feel like man i, I want to give up i want to quit uh -huh. lord like i need a word from you right now and he would give me one and then i would just turn around and share it with people on social media and that's oh, okay. how the videos started okay all right with being having such a big platform, right? I just finished watch, uh, reading John Ramirez's book. This guy, you know who John Ramirez is? Yeah I, yeah, I just finished reading this book. It's called Out of the Devil's Cauldron. It exposes so much about some witchcraft mm -hmm. and all the different kind of stuff. And I know with your platform, you guys shared, shared a couple of times, people trying to cast spells and all this different other stuff. How do you uh, just stay on top? Because when you get a platform like that, the devil's not happy, of course. How do you stay on top of being, like, you praying tongues or what's your, you know? All the time. Okay. Every day, all the time. I try not to go one day without feeling the presence of God. So to me, it's like some people wait till Sunday to, to have church. Uh -huh. I have church every day, yeah. like all the time. Worship, praise, get in my word literally every day. Okay. If I don't, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah. How, uh, how do you do that? See, I got only got two children, and it's hard with two children to have that quiet time. How do you get that quiet time? Like, is it early in the morning before everybody wake up, or you just because you got help, or? Um, honestly, it's just like, it's throughout the day. Like, I, I always think about how David said, you know, he was meditating on uh -huh. the Lord. Yeah. I feel like it's not a second that goes by in the day where I'm not meditating or thinking about God. I go in my car sometimes and make the kids. Oh, you got older kids yeah. too. So. Yeah, make my kids go in the room with the tablets. Oh, uh, okay. And then I just, I just get it in, so. Okay. Let's see, I had some, uh, I know I had a little list of questions. I'd be on top of my head though. Mm -hmm. It was, um. Uh, I'll ask you about your your hey, ministry started, your testimony. Are you gonna make it right right here, Dad? Kind of make that. Um, how do you stay spiritually fit? Um, and we, we of course we've seen all your videos about what's happening in times with you, right. prophetic stuff, even the drawing you had made about the coronavirus, all this cool stuff that God reveals to you, and all that different kind of stuff. How? Let's see. What's my question? Before I forget it. It's about dealing with all that. Oh, I know you was coming from the people with the witchcraft and the backlash and the, the big platform. I know that's kind of where it seemed like it was going. Oh, yeah. Game. So, I mean, along with the, the witchcraft, I know that because, you know, people, they, some Christians don't understand the spiritual realm more than the Satanists understand. They, they, right. they really into it. They understand that's about sad. walking, casting spells. I even seen one time at, I was at uh, this place uh, in Indiana. It's called County Line Apple Orchard. And it was right around October-ish. 
And uh, these three women were just sitting on the bench. And uh, off the bat, when I walked past, I said, they witches. Like, I could tell. Mm -hmm. They were sitting there. It. You could just feel it. It's like uh, evil. And they're just sitting there. And you could just tell they were, they were witches, whatever. So I, I know, you know, witchcraft and all that stuff is is, is, is a power. It's the spiritual mm -hmm. force behind it. But, um, oh, the, okay, the persecution, right? Like, so I know. Dylan, you want to make that left turn? Yeah. Okay. We're going to, uh, when we get here, we're going to make a left. That dealing with uh, the discouraging part of it, because once you get a platform, and sometimes you feel like the most, the people that come against you the most are your brothers and sisters yeah. in the faith. All right, hold on, we gotta wait until, I don't wanna get him. All right, go. <laughs> Thanks for that. That's yep. a true statement. Yep. Okay, so your brothers and sisters in the faith, and just like David had to encourage himself in the Lord when they were about talking about stoning him, and these just men that, you know, he done brought through the battles and all this mm -hmm. stuff, and they got mad because they family, so they talked about stoning him, but he had to encourage himself in the Lord. So how do you encourage yourself when the things you say are straight from the Lord, the things you say you know are uh, the truth, but you know that this culture now is so, you know, anti-truth even in the church sometimes. How do you uh, build yourself? How do you encourage yourself, I should say? Sometimes I just look at the record like, um, you know, a lot of people were laughing and mocking when I said, you know, Trump was going to win. And they made, you know, people make fun of me, people attack me, but then he won. And yeah. then, you know, stuff that I was talking about with the LGBTQ agenda, uh -huh. people, oh, you're crazy, but then it happens. So, yeah. so I think a lot of times that's where I really just draw some strength from. It's like, well, all right, well, you know, the Bible says they're going to mock you. The uh -huh. Bible says that people are going to fall asleep. And so it gets discouraging because it's not even the world. Yeah. It's supposed to be, you know, Christians. Are, and the biggest thing that hurts me, you know, they're like, oh, false prophet or, yeah. oh, he's doing it for the money. And uh -huh. then I just, God knows my heart. You know, he knows that I just love people. And he knows that I really love truth. Uh -huh. And, you know, I don't, I never understand him. Like, if I make you that mad or that upset, why do you yeah, still follow me? Yeah, feel Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I saw that thing you uh, had posted, uh, the guy, I guess, went uh, on your booking information mm -hmm. and put all this stuff, you yeah. know, all that different kind yeah. of stuff. So, yeah, that's something, man. That's just, you know, I, as I look at you and I look at, you know, your platform and what God has done. And, like, my wife, I'm telling my wife, like, man, it's like, it's only a few people I agree with all the time. I don't say I agree with nobody all the time. Because <laughs> right. nobody's gonna say something once. I'm like, I don't know right. about that, whatever. But right. you, you, and like, I think sometimes Lecrae, sometimes whatever. Mm -hmm. But you, Jonathan B. Reynolds, and they, these people all from like people from Chicago, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But Jonathan B. Reynolds, y'all two are the ones I, uh, Marcus Rogers, Jonathan B. Reynolds, the two I agree with the most because. Mm -hmm. Like, when Dr. Reynolds, he's like really, he's just like, I guess he had a high IQ. He's like a, yeah, I don't know. He yeah, he's, he's, really, he's, a smart guy. he's a real smart guy. But they look, you two look at it from all different angles. Right. You guys not one dimensional or whatever. So <laughs> I'm the type of person to do that too, but I'm not able sometimes to articulate as well as you are. So I was like, okay, if y'all want to know what I'm thinking, I'm just going to post this video. It's exactly what I'm going to say anyway. And he said it perfectly for me, whatever. Right. So yeah, I just enjoy, you know, uh, your ministry, man. I'm happy you're right here, you know, locally, you know, because I live in Gary. I ain't that far away, whatever. Right, right, right. So I'm happy I'm able to come in, you know, check you out and stuff. But hey, you guys just, you know, follow him and uh, follow the Lord, of course. But mm -hmm. if you guys want somebody to, you know, to hear something that's going to build you up, you're going to hear something that's going to challenge your thinking and stuff, be sure to follow Marcus Rogers. We've been walking. I, I sound like I'm out of breath. I'm not really that out of shape. <laughs> but he holding it in. He might be, he might be wheezing too. I got, I, got, I, got, I got a little cramp on the side. I was like, man, I'm, this is how I really feel. Like. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get back in shape though. So I'll be doing pull-ups like every day. Trying to do a little pull-ups every day. Yeah, I can't even do a pull-up right now. I, yeah. just, I do the push-ups. Yeah. Pull uh -huh. It's crazy how you got the military and then like life hit. And it's just like life hit, you know. Because I was like 100 and... Seven, eight, 85 pounds in the military. Saying, <laughs> yeah, I was skinny. I was, I was skinny. Yep, yep. But I uh, we stop it. Uh, I think that's all. You can press stop because I can't remember the other questions I had. I